two minutes about benchmarking <laughs> uh, from Tobias. Uh, there's something called uh, global method cache in Ruby. And if you benchmark stuff uh, with a single thread, you won't have an impact of, of it. But if you uh, have code that invalidates uh, Ruby's global method cache, you need to be aware of it when you do benchmarking because it, ha it can have up to 25% uh, of performance uh, impact of your code. So if you don't know what it, it's not going to be talk about global method cache, because we could, we could have a talk about it at least uh, for half, a, half an hour. But you can either ask me later or just Google my uh, surname and type global method cache. I did a lot of benchmarking on, on how invalidating global method cache by dynamic redefining methods, uh, using OpenStruct and some other things can have huge impact on your multi-threaded software. For example, on, if you run Puma or uh, use Sidekick, Sidekick, you can have perf performance issues that come out of uh, this uh, Ruby specific solution. But I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about Karavka. Uh, I'm Maciej Mansfeld. I work with Ruby for 10 years. I started with Rails 1.0. And I'm a Karavka creator. The really interesting thing that is that one of the co-creators comes for, from uh, Lviv, uh, Pavlo. He used to come to Pivorag as well. He's now living in Krakow. We used to work together and we built this tool. So it's partially built by people from Pivorak, which is really nice. <laughs> and he was the guy that, he was the, the, the one that told me that I should come here. So it's also thanks to him that I am here. If you have any questions, you can always drop me an email. You can find me on Twitter as well. And I run a blog about, mostly about Ruby a bit of, about of Kafka and some architectural stuff. If I speak too fast or if you have any problems understanding me, uh, you just tell me about it. We'll talk about, about a bit about Kafka. Uh, please raise your hands if you worked with, uh, with Kafka already. Yeah. Two people, <laughs> two from Poland, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we will talk how it works with Ruby. I'll try to convince you that using it and using Karavka can be nice, that you can combine it with Rails. I know that there are some people that hate Rails here, but you can combine it with any other Ruby-based framework as well. And I will show you some use cases, how it, it can help you. And it suits really well with uh, Anjay's talk from last month, I think. Andre was last month. Because he uh, introduced you guys to event sourcing and a few other DDD concepts. And Kafka suits great in this environment. Uh, so what is Kafka? Uh, it really depends. It depends on your use case. Uh, Kafka is a distributed streaming uh, platform. But for many cases, in ca you can think of it as a messaging system that is really flexible, really uh, easy to use, and uh, really powerful. And it was designed to allow you with a, to build uh, a huge environment of applications around it. Kafka can be used as a single message bus for a uh, huge ecosystem. You can provide many features without downtimes. You could even migrate between, uh, I don't know, AWS and Azure and any other infrastructure without downtimes, maintaining uh, your systems and their performance on a decent level. It provides broadcasting and it's uh, by far, I, th I think by far, the best feature that is uh, giving for free when you start using Kafka. And it allows to build systems that are event-based. Uh, I know that Anja is maintaining some of the event uh, libraries for Ruby, and the events go to database, and then you retrieve them, you do some stuff. You can do all of it 
with Kafka as well, and I think much faster. And everyone is using it, basically. Uh, the best example is, uh, I think, either Spotify or LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn transfers 600 gigabytes of data per day with Kafka. So it's really nice. There is the most popular uh, Polish website called Onet, and they use Kafka to gather all the details about all users that use their websites. When you open a website from a mobile device, from a laptop, whatever, they gather with JavaScript all the details they can get, browser, I don't know, screen resolution, all of it, and they just flash it to Kafka. And it handles it uh, extremely well. But a bit about how it works. Kafka, uh, as I said, can be a message backbone for a big ecosystem. You can stream into it data. You can send messages. You can use something called connectors to stream uh, changes from your, directly from your database into Kafka. So you can hook up on a really low level and just make all other applications that are interested in changes in the database aware of them without uh, having any additional hooks, without having, I don't know, before actions, whatever. I, I hate callbacks, so uh, I don't use them. But if some, some of you use callbacks, uh, you could replace it with things like that. And the really good thing is that when you have <coughs> Kafka, you can build applications in a real isolation. They don't need to be aware of itself. The Kafka concept is really easy. It's all about topics. You can think about topics as uh, about namespaces or cues from Sidekick. You put stuff into a topic and you can retrieve it later on. Topics, are, topics can be divided into partitions. By default, you have a single partition in a single topic, but you can have way more of them. If you need to scale, you can use partitions to scale because then you can spin up a single process that will eat up data from a single partition, and you can have as many partitions as you need, but you, you still push data uh, directly into the topic. Obviously, if you need to uh, push to a single partition. There are some cases like that. You can do it. But the default approach is, I would say, for 90% of people or use cases, uh, just enough. Uh, Kafka cluster allows you to build cons uh, consumer groups, which means that you can have the same message uh, delivered to multiple consumer groups. But inside of a consumer group, only one uh, process that listens uh, will get this, the, the message. There won't be a case when the same message is being delivered to, I don't know, two, two processes from the same consumer group. It is really uh, useful for scaling because then you could basically think of consumer groups as a, a single application that, have, uh, that has uh, multiple processes running. Is there a pointer here? Oh, nice. Oh, it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Ruby logo here. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, I don't know what happened, but yeah, OK. Uh, Ruby has a long story of uh, working with Kafka. The oldest driver for Ruby is JRuby Kafka for JRuby. And JRuby is uh, driver is basically only a wrapper around the official Kafka team supported Java uh, driver. There used to be a great library called Poseidon, but the guy at, at some point the guy updated the README with unmaintained go somewhere else, unfortunately. But luckily uh, Zendesk decided that they have a lot of Ruby code. They want to use it with Kafka. No one is doing it, so they will put money into it. And they put a lot of money. And uh, luckily, it, it's always good to have a company to back you up when you do open source. 
There's a Phobos, which is uh, a low level, level library that uses Ruby Kafka to give you a bit of uh, ease when you have to configure everything. And there is Karafka that is extensively using Ruby Kafka as a low level driver to provide uh, additional features to Ruby, uh, to Ruby Kafka. And oh yeah, as I, as I, I should mention that obviously JRuby the, won't run with CRuby. Sorry. And there are a lot of Java docs you need to read to understand. Uh, please don't use this one. It's still in, in uh, Ruby gems. It is still in uh, GitHub, but it does not, it, it's not supported. So it does not uh, work with the new Kafka versions. Yeah, use this one. If you decide to go low level, it's really good. Uh, yeah, Phobos is maintained because it, it was built by uh, a company. It was built at the same time Karavka was built. We didn't know about each other, so we put a lot of effort into building frameworks and, uh, well, my one, so <laughs> based on number of stars and companies that are using it. So it, yeah, I'm happy, but they use it as well, so they maintain it. And it, it can be still really good. You can think of it as uh, Sinatra for small stuff. If you do need to do a few things and you don't want to play with uh, a lot of configuration details that you have to set up with uh, uh, Kafka Ruby, Ruby Kafka, then you can just take Phobos. And there is Karafka. It's a micro framework that is designed to simplify uh, Kafka-based application development. And it was built because when you introduce a new concept to your team, it brings a certain overhead. Kafka provides a different uh, way of working than a typical HTTP uh, request response uh, flow. And p developers tend to lose a lot of time on figuring things out, on learning, on playing, and when you have 20 people or 25 people working on some stuff and they need to do stuff like that, figure out how it works, read Kafka documentation, go into low configuration levels, figure out how to start it, stop it, how to uh, work with it uh, efficiently. It just drains money out of the company. So what we did, uh, we decided to create an extra layer that would allow developers to get a race-like, I shouldn't say it, but yeah, race-like feeling. So they won't have to worry about all the details. They can just use it as a jam, pull it, plug and play. And if they, have, if they have any problems later on down the road, they can just read the documentation either of uh, Karafka, Ruby Kafka, or Kafka itself, but they can start working. They can receive messages, uh, reply to them, create complex data flows with it without having to care. And uh, yeah, it says that the, yeah, developers should not care about low level stuff. It's fun, but 95% of our work uh, is not here. It's in business logic. This is what customers pay for. And, uh, but why, why we decided to, to do things like that? So HTTP was not enough. It does not provide broadcasting. It, uh, <laughs> if you need to ping multiple endpoints that something changed with HTTP and you want to add a, a next one, you will have to update the, the application that is sending the events, which makes them uh, less independent they start to be aware of themselves. You need to change settings. You need to update the new URL that needs to be pinged when things change. Also, HTTP is not always the, the fastest or the best uh, to transfer data. Mm. We didn't want to maintain internal API clients, even if you have standard REST APIs or GraphQL APIs. They're always a bit custom, so if one endpoint changes, you need to update uh, a second one. And it creates overhead. And imagine that you have 100 applications that communicate with each other. 
you have a lot of updating, unfortunately. But you could replace HTTP with Kafka with message broker, and it gives you uh, certain benefits. First of all, it gives you the possibility to replace microservices transparently. You could take a Ruby-based microservice, uh, decide that it's not enough, take Elixir, take Benchy, uh, do some stuff, replace it, and as long as uh, you're able to work with the data you send from Ruby, uh, for it's, most of the time it's JSON, you can just pick it up with Elixir, you can work, you can replace them with different technologies. It makes, it gives you way more flexibility than keeping uh, monolithic stack. Sometimes Ruby is not enough, let's be honest. Uh, you, can great, you can have great isolation. They won't be aware of other applications, they will just send messages to a topic and uh, other applications will just listen to topics. There is nothing in between except Kafka. You can create applications that will listen on events from multiple microservices. So if you decide to add a new app, you can just decide to listen on uh, this app, that app and combine the data, do something with it. And as long as you don't change the data you send, the data formats, uh, everything works great. And if you think about it, life is, real life is really about messaging. Uh, it's asynchronous. I speak to you, hopefully you listen, but I don't wait for a reply after each sentence. And uh, this is how life goes. We send emails, we don't wait in front of the screen until we get a reply. So the question is why we keep making applications that don't work the way uh, real world does. And you can change it with, uh, with Karafka. I hope you know what is celluloid. You probably use Sidekick, you know Rails, you know Sinatra. So Karafka uses all of this uh, stuff to provide a better experience uh, with working with Kafka. So you're not alone with problems. If you have some problems with Kafka, most of them come from either Sidekick or Celluloid. It, you're able to Google it. You're able to figure it out. You can use for bigger applications uh, Rails app like Structure. And if you have just, I don't know, one topic, two topics, you can just put it all into single file, 25, up to, I don't know, 50 lines, and you get job done. Mm. Karavka is combined from few, uh, with a few concepts. You have a consumer that eats out messages from topics. You have router that figures out which controller should be executed. You have worker that runs the code that needs to be executed in the background. You have responder that can, uh, that is based on Platforma Tech responders gem. So you can just receive messages and reply to them or to different topics. And you have the CLI to provide you with some fancy things. And you have something that is not listed that is Capistrano integration that works out of the box. Uh, and also it works with Docker. So here, yeah, Docker. <laughs> It does not differ from uh, any router-based uh, system. You get a message, you get it to consumer, to router, to controller, and the worker is running it somewhere in the background if you decide to use it with Sidekick. If you decide to use it without it, here the execution will happen, and that's all. Simple as that. This is all you need to do to use it. Uh, the example app is not working. <laughs> I think someone uh, in our core team to fix it. But maybe we should release it as a gem and then it, it will always work. But yeah, we'll, I will think about it. Karavka comes with some conventions and features. You have a really simple routing engine. Kafka's uh, topics are really simple. They're just names. 
so we don't have multi-level nestings, things like that. Each topic is separate, so the structure is pretty simple. You have a topic and you have a controller that needs to react when a message comes to this topic. There are some, many, uh, some uh, options that you can use to make it more uh, customable. If you don't decide to work with JSON, if you stream binary data, if you want to do s things differently, you can do it. Uh, but that by default, it's not needed. You don't need to define workers, sidekick workers, and stuff like that. It happens automatically uh, based on the names. So this is the, I think this is the only magical part. But you don't have to use it if you decide. Uh, you can override everything and make it your own. Uh, and probably this is the, the biggest difference in between Rails controllers and Karafka controllers. There is a single method called perform. So there are no mm, REST uh, approaches or things like that with Kafka. Single topic, single controller, single message. But you get params and you can do whatever you want. You can do some pre-processing if you decide. For example, if you have a really heavy job, but you're only interested in it if it happened uh, less than one minute ago, you can reject all the messages that are older. Because sometimes uh, the, you can get way more messages than you have uh, processors, so you're not able to eat all of it, but you're only interested in the, in the most recent events. So you can just drop all, all the older ones. There's CLI for server, printing rows, installing, getting some details, uh, showing the flow. Mm. This one is really interesting. Oh, I think I've lost a slide. Okay, so I'll try to improvise. With Kafka, you can build multi-application flow, uh, data flow, like with Elixir, in a single app. So you can receive data, do something with it, put it somewhere else, get the results, put it somewhere else, and you can pipe it like that uh, up until the end of the world. And if you design uh, part of it with uh, Karafka, you can just print the results. What is incoming message? Where is it being processed? And where the output goes? The, the difference is that you don't have the one-to-one -one relation. You get one message and you can broadcast it to as many applications and as many topics as you want. So we can create a really complex business logic and business flow with it. There are responders that allow you to do exactly that. You can just respond with your uh, processing results to a single topic or multiple topics. It's up to you. Uh, yeah, it's the performance depends. As with any framework, it strongly depends on your code, on the size of your messages, the type of your messages, if it's <coughs> JSON, if it's uh, XML, binary data. It depends. If you decide to use it with Sidekick, uh, we're now making it, uh, we're trying to make it work with Sidekick Pro <coughs> and a few other engines. For now, it works only with Sidekick. And without it, the Redis performance is an impact as well. <coughs> I used the benchmark IPS <laughs> to benchmark it. Uh, it can tr uh, process up to 30K messages per second, which is, I think, pretty decent. Uh, if you decide to send messages, it's less than a millisecond to send a single message to Kafka in the slowest mode, which is the most secure. In the, slow, in the most secure mode, uh, the driver that sends the message to Kafka waits until all the nodes from a cluster confirm that they've received a message. Uh, it's even less one-tenth of a millisecond if you agree that only a single node needs to confirm. And even less if you decide to do it with async mode, which means that it will be sent somewhere, somehow, uh, somewhere. But not in your uh, process pipe, which is really good for if you do uh, high-performance stuff in Ruby. 
There are multiple scaling strategies, both for Kafka and Karavka. Uh, you can scale with multiple threads on Kafka, the easiest one. You know it, it works with Sidekick, it works exactly the same here. You can scale with Kafka uh, by using partitions. Uh, partitions are a really interesting topic. Uh, I could have an next talk about only partitions. Uh, you could scale also with uh, Karavka clusterization, which means that you could spin up multiple processes that would uh, rebalance the topics in between they uh, work. And you can combine it with Rails. Uh, it's a single gem, so you can just drop it. It's really cool to start using it uh, in Rails or in any other Ruby framework with uh, small steps. You can just put it in and start sending messages. You don't need to read them. You don't need to build complex apps. You just push the events into Kafka topics. And once you're, you feel confident enough, you can just start eating them up. But you can hook up, send events, and just forget about them at the beginning, just to build up the uh, Kafka layer around the business logic. This is the easy way, easiest way to do it. You have, a, I don't know, a Rails uh, create action, and you can just send the message and do your stuff. I know that there is a company in the US that's building a library with uh, water drop that is part of Karavka to provide a gem that would, will automati automatically hook up to before callbacks in active record and we'll do this for you. But I don't recommend it because it's an additional magic layer and it's really bad to do that. Uh, and this is a use case. Uh, there are a few other use cases. For example, Shopify uses Karavka uh, quite extensively. They dedicated some people to help me out to uh, develop new features. They commit performance, uh, performance patches and stuff like that because they, they've got some bottlenecks in it. <laughs> but they fixed all of them, so I'm, I'm really happy about it. Uh, there are at least 25 or 30 bigger companies in the US that ping me from time to time with their problems with Karavka, Kafka, or stuff like that. And there's uh, Koditsu. Mm. platform that I'm building, comprehensive, blah, 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 programmers, work habits, evaluation. In a big shortcut, we just do data mining on Git and figure out how you work, uh, how, c how can you optimize your work, when and where you make mistakes, and uh, how you can fix them. It's uh, Kafka acts as a backbone. 10 Ruby applications, or 10 Rails applications, a uh, few Karavka separate applications. We analyze, yeah, 500 up to 800, even more now commits. We, yeah, detected 2 million offenses. To give you an insight, we add uh, 60K of new daily insight and statistic metric points each day to the database. And it all comes down to something like that. A single backbone, Kafka backbone. Uh, most of our applications have their own database. So it's really, uh, <coughs> it scales really easily. We don't have a single point of knowledge where everything is uh, gathered. Single app, single database, Kafka messaging. The same with front end, with any other computing stuff. Same with mailing notifications. When a new user comes, there's an event that is being sent to Kafka. There's a mailing application that catches it and schedules uh, a mailing. And yeah. If you decide to go this road, make sure that every single uh, information that is significant for your business is being sent to Kafka. Uh, make sure your applications don't care about the origins of the event. Just make sure that they, know they will be able to work with the message they receive. Downtimes aren't a problem. You can just queue and cut up, fix bugs, 
and reprocess, I don't know, last, last five minutes or last 10 minutes of the events. You can just replay them. Please star, we have way more stars now. But the funny thing is that people don't give stars if they don't use it and they won't use it if there are no stars. So please help us out. Uh, th this software is really well written. It has extensive documentation both uh, on usage and on uh, development. So we appreciate any help. With uh, Karavka example app, with a few other additional gems, or just play with it. If you want to read more, you can go to any of those. Really interesting stuff is here, really interesting, especially on uh, how to build bigger systems. And yeah, I think that's all. Uh, I don't have a slide on what you can talk with me about, <laughs> but you can talk with me about Kafka, Karavka, Ruby, a bit about Elixir, Truffle Ruby. Uh, I know a few things about the Ruby 3.0 because I've talked recently with uh, Hiroshi from uh, Ruby core team. We've met on a different conference in Poland. So I have pretty cool news. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I think that's all. So thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Well, uh, I've, it's a different layer. First of all, we took Rubocop as one of the engines. We take all the open source engines, not only to catch uh, either security problems or uh, styling con problems, things like that. We catch it all. We, we figure out who did this, <laughs> when, uh, in what circumstances. We take a lot of uh, data about the um, project state itself as it is now, plus the whole historic insight on, on how it performed, how it was being developed, by whom, for how long, things like that. We combine all of it and we provide an intel that you, you can, you should focus more on this guy because he's creating 90% of noise in your project. You could make this and that better. If you need to refactor, don't focus on that stuff because you don't change it a lot, but there, some parts of your system that might look a bit better, but they change quite often. So we just go under one layer above as well, because we try to figure out the people behind the code, not only to offend the code, fix that, fix that, security issue, styling, but hey dude, you're not working too well. And uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, we take Git and we data mine. If you take a project that is, I don't know, two years old with five people, you can get between two and five gigabytes of data for data mining. So you get a quite interesting perspective on how the software is being developed. It's in, still in alpha stage, but slowly we're planning to add uh, some AI stuff to be able to predict uh, whether or not, for example, it's worth switching uh, projects for a particular developer because he's tired of working with what he's have to do. So it looks really promising. Is it just software as service closed project or everybody can install it? Uh, well, it's closed, at least for now. Uh, we use a lot of open source. We contribute as well. Okay. But the core part, the analytics and the, the data mining is closed. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> I have one uh, Rails application. I built a uh, mm -hmm. uh, bunch of code around the Kafka and can use uh, that Kafka in other application on different language or on yes. other Rails application. Yes, as long as you can parse the message you send. For example, if you, if you decide to use, I don't know, Elixir. Mm -hmm. uh, Elixir is able to parse JSON. So if you send a JSON, you can receive it uh, and parse it and work with it. It is really good. Uh, Kafka is great for making, for moving from a single uh, monolith application towards microservices because you can do it in small steps. Uh, you could even go further and we do this. We use Kafka 
as an internal message backbone for internal communication in the same app. And wh when it grows, we can just take single parts of a microservice, split it apart, and nothing will change because everything is being sent via Kafka. So when I do something in, a, in my small application, I generate an event, and based on this event, the same app reacts and does something else. So yes, you can just plug it in, start sending messages, create a new small app, receive them, and do the new, new business logic. Meanwhile, you can extract your existing parts of business logic to, and move them to microservices. You can use Kafka with many other things. You can use uh, Kafka with uh, something called Kafka Stream for uh, processing. You can hook up Apache Spark to it. You can do a lot of AWS stuff that is compatible with Kafka and gives you a lot of possibilities, uh, especially with the big data stuff that is there. Any more questions? Why should you <laughs> uh, it, uh, I hate this question. Uh, first of all, uh, the way when I when I was working with RabbitMQ, it didn't have broadcasting at all. It has it now. I know it has, uh, but it's uh, a bit more tricky because you need to set up some things. You need to configure stuff. There is no stuff like that with Kafka. And uh, when we were investigating Zero MQ, Rabbit MQ, Kafka, uh, I pinged uh, our DevOps, head of DevOps, and asked him, Lukas, with which technology would you like to work uh, for the same money you do now? <laughs> and he said that uh, Kafka is by far the less uh, complex in terms of maintenance, scaling, uh, migrating in between uh, in, in, in between provi server providers, because we are also migrating for, from bare metal servers to AWS infrastructure. We had to do it off, uh, without downtimes, and uh, it was super easy to, to do it with Kafka. So you could try to rep replicate some of the concepts that Kafka has with RabbitMQ, and probably you would be able to. And it's not a bad choice as well, but broadcasting is a bit harder to do than with this. And zero MQ, as far as I know, it still does not have broca broadcasting, so it's out of the view. Any more questions? Okay, so thank you.